now we we have this idea of uh, we, we've checked that we have these placeholders. We we know that we do have some placeholders, uh, so we can continue uh, continue on. And we should talk for a minute about how we're going to get the inputs from the from the user. So for each one of these placeholders, we need to get a value from the user. I'm not going to show you that just yet. I want you to think about that. But in addition to um, asking for the for these, you're also going to have these inputs from the user. So let's just print uh, args dot inputs. So what does that look like when we run this from the command line? Like so, let's uh, let's run it with the uh, uh, with the uh, inputs fox. How about um, what it look? What we're printing here is none. In args equals inputs. Let's let's put inputs equals uh, like this, so that we can see something. Uh, so we know what we're looking at. So inputs equals to none. So we provided nothing on the command line. So this is something you should understand when you do in args plus you're going to get one or more and so there's always going to be something in uh, in that list. Um, when you do um, a star you're going to either get a list with some items in it or you're going to get none. Uh, so let's give it some inputs like foo and bar and now we have inputs is equal to a list that contains foo and bar because because we declared it with n args equals to star. So now think about that. Inputs is, is either nothing or it's a list with some elements in it. So for each one of the placeholders, you need to use the input um, function. And, and that and it looks like this. Um, so if input, well actually let's say what's help on input. And if we look at this, the help on it is that it needs a prompt or it should have a prompt. It, it doesn't have to, but you should. So the prompt is what's going to be printed telling the user uh, you know, please give me an adjective. Please give me a noun. That's going to be the prompt. And then the user is going to type something. They're going to hit return, and it says here the trailing new line is stripped. So that is um, the return that they press for to to enter their answer. That will be stripped from from here. So um, the return value is going to be what they type less that that new line. So you're going to use the input function or you're going. You're only going to use the input function if you have nothing in inputs. So for testing purposes, I want you to use the inputs. Um, so when you get a value, if you need to use get a value, you know, for instance, you would say input give me an adjective, and that adjective is going to come from you know matching on the placeholders. Um, you know this kind of stuff here when we did the find all. You're going to say, "Give me an adjective. Give me a noun. Give me a preposition." And then, you know, if uh, it, it'll print like this, "Give me an adjective." And if I type blue and hit enter, the value is going to be blue, just the string, because that new line is going to be stripped off. If, however, there are some inputs, one, you can assume that there will be the same number of inputs as there are placeholders. I'm not going to. Uh, this is only for testing purposes, so I'm not going to make you really jump through hoops to verify that you have all the same numbers and everything like that. Just assume that you're going to have the right number of, of inputs given from the command line. And they're going to be in the order that they need to be substituted into the text. So for instance, I will give you surly car under bicycle, and surly should go for the adjective, car should go for the noun, under for the preposition, and bicycle for the last noun. And so how you get the items, how you get those input values off of inputs, you're probably going to want to use pop. But note that the list pop method returns by default the last item on the list. So I would recommend you read help list pop so you understand how to get the first one off. Because for the first placeholder, you need to get the first value off inputs. I'm going to leave it at that. Um, the last thing is is you're going to be looking at the using uh, <clears throat> the re sub function to substitute these values into your text. So let's take for instance, uh, let's look at what text is again. We have this. We want to use re dot sub, and for instance, we're going to substitute this pattern. And we want to substitute it with something like blue. And we're going to do this in text. What do we get? The quick blue 
noun jumps preposition the lazy noun. So um, hopefully you can see how you can use this pattern from find all as this part of the argument here. The blue is either going to come from the input uh, function that you ask the user, or it's going to come from the inputs that you're given on the command line. And then you're going to substitute that into text. What you get back is a new piece of text. So how are you going to accrete these values? How are you going to accumulate them so that as you replace each one of these values that you find that you are finding, each one of these placeholders, as you replace them with a the value from the user, that text is getting updated such that by the end of all the substitutions, you now have the new piece of text with all the new values in it, and then you'll print that. Uh, I'm going to leave it at that. I, I hope that that gives you enough so that you're not stuck, but I hope it's still uh, quite a challenge for you. Spend as long as, as, long as you need on this. Um, try not to look ahead at the answer um, unless you're just completely stuck. Uh, it's okay to give yourself a few days on some of these problems. Uh, as they get harder, uh, don't expect to be able to, you know, to solve these in an hour. Um, uh, so definitely take a walk, uh, go lay in a hammock, uh, sleep on it, uh, let your brain uh, work in a diffuse mode to, to figure out the answer, and, uh, and I, I definitely believe that you can do this. Um, so next we'll talk about the solution.